and they had a survey done there as well. So yes. I think we could probably share the costs associated with the, the survey. Uh, I should have a proposal today, early tomorrow. I'll forward it along to the treasurer and the chief for um, um, review. Um, I already spoke to him about approximate budget where we need to be, and he's all within that. So we're a little safe there. Um, we met with. We had a just a. I want to say a. a group meeting with the chief, Todd Foster, myself, to go over reduction of scope and and uh, Chief and I had met on a couple of occasions just kind of going over interior layouts and how we can consolidate some of the square footage to reduce the overall cost of the building. Obviously square footage is affected by it. We presented those rough sketches to the architect, had some discussion of you know what the next steps are with them. They were putting together a team and a schedule. Let me get your attention. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at that point, um, he's he's went back with his team. They're going to start doing some drafting. They're going to be starting to do some drafting sketches of uh, the the drawings that the chief has given them. Um, we are also um, I'm going to start soliciting costs associated with doing some borings at that location just to find out um, the gradations of soil and the condi soil condition so that Todd's team and the structural engineers can begin the design of, of the overall structure and the, and the foundations. So those activities are ongoing. I think we're going to have a follow-up meeting within a, a week or two with Todd's group just to kind of go over those initial s sketches. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, and then he, he's within a couple of weeks, he should be able to present a list of his sub-consulting engineers and team players that will be on KBA's portion of it so that I'll know and, as, and the chief will know, you know, some names and faces that we'll be dealing with. We'll probably have a kickoff meeting, I'd say, in a month or so. That, Hopefully less. Um, I know. just realized as I was getting ready for the meeting that I received the copy of our contract from our office, but in between all the hubble of the holidays and the weather last week, I never forwarded it on to the sure. chief or the chairman. So I did print out copies of that so that you can have um, that to review over. This it reflects is, the conversations with Mike, right? Correct. Uh, as far as I'm aware. Excuse me one second. Let the record show that Todd Costa came in at 5.05, joined the meeting at 5 .05. Fashion is late. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the water commission has a, a meeting tomorrow night, and that they are aware of the survey the share, yeah. sharing the survey and right, mm -hmm. anxiously awaiting the bid from the survey. Yeah, and so I, I'll have that. I'm, I'm, I was hoping to have it before five, but he asked me who to make it out. He just needs that information, so I'm sure he's working on it as we speak. If I get it, I'll forward it along instantly. Um, I did forward just so everybody's aware I, I did my uh, ethics test and certificate of it submitted that on for record um because like every project usually typically has that so they asked some tough questions there's 10 tough questions that everybody could take you know, relatively simple if you follow common sense half the time um, if you fail it you probably shouldn't learn from anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what i did do at our last meeting with the chief and todd is i just asked the chief to start to think about his consolidation of any equipment or material that he might be bringing over to the new station and what that does is it just gives us some insight to their architectural team and their um, IT and electrical if there's any components that he recently purchased that he's going to utilize so that we can keep it out of the scope of the overall project budget so I've updated the project budget I submitted it um, last last time we met that'll that will evolve a little bit depending on how the design goes and the costs associated with it with the cost estimates. So I'll keep everybody abreast of what's going on with that as it, as it moves forward. So right now the, it's basically they're at schematic design up over again because we went from a you know $13 million, $14 million project down to an eight. It's actually $6 million versus $2 million of soft cost. So that's all stuff that we're working through right now. So there'll be some, in, just so the committee knows, just because you remove square footage doesn't necessarily mean you're losing that apparatus space. You gotta be collectively through the building. So that apparatus space is a lot of spaces. You don't save a lot of money losing a bay. It's some of the technical and, and more 
uh, challenging spaces of the admi administration and living quarters that create some of the sure. most and cost effective. And just taking a small area out of overall, like you, could, you can run down the length of the building and take two feet out, but that's taking out air. You still have the same number of light fixtures, you still Exterior have the same walls. number of heating requirements, so on and so forth. You're really just taking out some slab, a little bit of roof structure. So it's got to be methodical, but it also has to cut program. It's got to cut space out in order to get that. Right. I, I think I cut it down, like I said, when I gave you that, that revised yep. estimation that I did. I cut it as much. I, the apparatus space so still made your program. the same, but yep. uh, I cut a significant out. amount of, of other space out. So one of the things that we are going to do, is the, the issue with every engineering firm and every architect is that you don't get extra money to try to build a building as efficient as you can. I mean, it's not like you're going to give them another three hundred thousand or a million dollars to make the exterior walls that much more, you know, our value to save heat and all that. But we challenge them as we go through the design to try to incorporate as as much of the energy code, if not more, so the longevity and the efficiency of the building is for a longer period of time. So, you know, the cost of it, although you go into a new building and it's going to be more efficient, you still got a higher utility cost associated with running a new station. It is a myth out there that people think because you build a new station, it's most efficient, it's going to be cheaper than what you had. That's not always the case. So we try to make sure that the exterior, you know, envelope, the structure, is insulated to the you know, best we can possibly do and afford, as well as the roof structure, which typically KBA does a great job and it typically exceeds what the energy codes are, but you know, I mean, it, it we, we do the, uh, I don't remember the exact term for it, but it's, it basically is the R value method, which right. is, takes the code requirement and we meet or beat that based on um, efficiencies in construction. So um, there's, there's that method to calculate it, and then there's the what they call a calculated method, which is some software, and you run through what everything in the wall is. Usually if you meet what's prescribed in the code, you're better than the calculated method. Um, the best thing that I can do to explain that is we've got a construction project taking place right now in Orleans um, Police Station. It's fully weather tight, and actually they had one door that was just a piece of plastic. The site super would show up to the site at 4 a.m. He would shut the heat off. And he was running the building all night at 70 degrees. Shut the heat off. The guys would come work in t-shirts all day long, and he wouldn't have to turn the heat on until the end of the day. That's how efficient, efficient we want to make those buildings. So that literally, body heat becomes your heat source right. within the building. So the, the other primary part of that is the mechanical systems. You know, most engineers, because something worked 15 years ago, they they have the tendency of utilizing that same system. Well, everything's evolving. I mean, we all know that. You know, every you know, even energy itself with the with the solar panels that we got going on and all of that, electricity, believe it or not, is becoming even more efficient utilizing that for some of the mechanical equipment. So they're looking at different options to actually try to save efficiency as well with, as we move forward with that. I think we are going to look at at least providing the infrastructure in case solar is ever able to go it, onto the building. It's a requirement in the new building code that right. and we're just trying to, is the way they phrased it in the code, it's a little squirrely, but you have to um, size your structure to support solar panels within the future. Right. Um, so that'll all be part of the overall design. So exactly. all I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of thought process, even though we've just started, there's a lot of background stuff that's going to be going on. And you know, you may not get you know a set of plans thrown at you right away, but you're going to start to see some sketches and drawings of some um, different variations of this building that'll be within our budget and then we're going to just move forward with it. That's where we're at. Right so now we're, we're in, as I like to call it, the project plan phase. So we, we map out a plan, we map out the milestones, the deadlines, the, the program budgets. Um, you know, programmers, we're dialing that back from where we were, but the, we're mapping out the process. We shared that with, with Joe and with the chief preliminarily. Now we're going into the more finite detail. And all of this is just basically a roadmap for meeting that out to bid date and it kind of takes the thought process um, not out of it for the milestone but um, I've got a PDF I'll send it. it it makes that thought process easier so now you're just working milestone to milestone we know who we need to meet with we know what we have to accomplish within these specific durations of time and everybody's got the plan sitting in front of them so it's a well-oiled machine 
as we're moving this forward. So, so the only other component that I'm going to give you an update on is that we're going to start soliciting um, commissioning agents and all of those items. Because as we as these plans evolve, we're going to have our commissioning agent in uh, sooner than later um, to look at the design and just make sure that you know what they're specifying is a we're getting a at the end of the day, and that goes along with testing agencies for like typically, and I'll use the a company Briggs Engineering for on-site compaction, concrete testing, and, and uh, steel inspections. We'll solicit costs from a, a number of different vendors that provide those services. We'll evaluate where we feel you know, the, their comparables are and then give you a recommendation at what direction to go. All of that is budgeted in the overall budget that I provided, and I'll, I'll make sure that we stay within our budget so that, you know, any dollar we save will go back into the station and the program needs for the station. So that's all I have. Wonderful. Do we, go ahead, any questions? I just was on the uh, question was, will we get an update on the design? Um, Probably within, uh, I'd say within two to three weeks, we should have a, a sketch of, uh, right. of the interior layout, not necessarily exterior right now. I mean, I, I think that's no, pretty true. Sure. There'll be pretty much a floor plan as of right now. We've got to really dial a lot of back. The, the apparatus base, pretty much the same, but mm -hmm. because it's, we're starting fresh, we're starting right. all new, we have something basically ground up, recreating that whole file, that whole model, um, so that it's a clean document for us to move forward with. Because we were, in the early stages, kind of pushing and pulling, tweaking mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Yeah. If I push them too hard, then we're going to be changing it back and forth. Then I just soon have to do it once and right. The other thing is, I filled in a couple uh, questions about going out to bid and why we haven't gone out to bid yet. And so we can't because of the legal process. I go, we just now have the OPM and the engineer on board. So I've had people asking me, how did you get this price? And I go, that's part of the feasibility process. That's why we do a feasibility study to get a cost estimate, but we can't get bid prices until after we hired everybody. And they didn't understand that the 149 process, as far as the hiring and when you could do specific milestones within that. So I've, I've had to field a couple of questions. They, and they were curious as to, well, why can't you do that? I go, well, the state has a very specific thing and it's laid out by the cost of the project. It's the care of the and we have no, we have no way around it. We have to follow their process and we don't, we don't have a way. So if you get those, if you, if you want to feel them or send them to me, I don't care, but. Yeah, you always send them to me, I can watch um, them. I was able to kind of the, yeah. explain the, the process, but I said, you can read the law, it's pretty specific by cost what you have to do. It's nice seeing local people showing an interest in, uh, you know, nice. but there, there is also like this 18 file subcontractor that, you know, they have to be, you know, BCAM certified and they got to go through the process. Now, if they're a non-file sub, they can go through the general contractor, but I'm able to, I guess direct them in that direction one way or the other. So it feels pretty good. It's an educational process a lot for the community. I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's involved in it, just like Joe said, those 18, fortunately, we'll knock at least two of them off. Elevator's gone, right? Elevator's gone, and we won't use metal windows to a level that you're going to require to, to do file metal sub window file sub bids. Um, but most people don't understand that. I mean, we did Carver together. And we had a gentleman on the building committee who does construction, does development, and he'd look at prices and be like, I can get it for a third of that. Um, I wish but that simple, right? it's yeah. all, a lot of it is dictated by the state right down to the wage rate of the, the labor who's cleaning up. That's yeah, the prevailing wage is, we, that's part of the, uh, the bidding documents. So we, prior to bidding, I'll have to secure uh, prevailing wages and it'll carry during the duration of the construction. Now, if it, if it exceeds a year, I have to get new prevailing mm -hmm. wages and they have to be inserted in the overall documents. And I have to, as our clerk of the works and our on-site representation will be monitoring through certified payroll. He monitors the changes. So if certified payrolls, let's say they're getting $60 an hour, and use that as an example, and it goes up to $63, our guys look at this, the date that it increased making sure that their five plus contracts are paying the guys appropriate. So it's a, it's a yeah. lot to look at. So. And you, you have to be good. Yeah. Can't, can't can't it's good. Well, it's like, it's like the, uh, just the OPM, you know, explaining what the OPM and what the engineering do to people to the, so they understand like, that there's no, there's no way around this. We don't, we have to, we have to comply with the law. And, and there's a time people are like, well, why do you do this and that? And go, there's no, there's no leeway in this. We have no, like, 
we have to comply with national law or we go to jail. So. The best part about it is you get a better building when, when you know, when they didn't have an OPM and the only reason they implemented it, and it's not trying to say, you know, it, it's, it's something that you need and we definitely need to be there. You, you get a better managed project because a lot of owners were managing the project on their own mm -hmm. and they, they didn't understand the mass law or mass general law or the, or the, or the file subcontractor laws that associated with it. And, it, 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 and they, it gets personal between an owner and a, and a subcontractor. And the OPM kind of keeps that, you know, both sides aside and we work out the differences and give you the information. So. It's always a challenge, trust me. I was, we were just having this conversation today about it, about another project. You know, you get a chain order, and I hate, I told you, I, from the very first interview, I hate spending money, and I, even if it's not even mine. And every chain order, I'm pretty good about them, making sure that they prove it to me. I want to keep those to a minimum, hopefully. Yeah. Well, that's why we do the homework now. That way there's no change orders or a few change orders at the end if we work out all the minutiae right now. There's, we'll, we get into it, but there is, and I'll, I'll kind of said this all along, I don't know if I've said it to you folks, um, but there is a level of expectation or a standard level of care within our industry. There's no such thing as a perfect set of documents. Uh, whatever, no matter how if hard someone told you that, they're lying to you. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we do a darn good job of, of flushing out a lot of details, but I can tell you at least three jobs within the past three years, we had a, an issue with X on this project. So, okay, we came back to the office and shared that with everybody. We made an adjustment from X to X plus one for the next project that went out. And then that project went out. And sometimes it was the same contractor comes back, looks at it, goes, okay, well, that's done. And, and it went back to what it was before. And it's a game yeah, that the ways, right? subcontractors will play, unfortunately, where they misconstrue the documents yeah. to, to their favor. Even code changes when it comes to electrical or plumbing, a, a contract and a code change could happen in 2005. But if, if the drawings aren't explicit, they keep their mouth shut. And you know, you would think through an RFI process during the bidding, they would come out and, and forthcome the question so that they could bid it accurately. They know it's, it could be a possible change, they keep their mouth shut. And then, so I go to the AG's office or the IG's office to see if there's any case law that they've heard over this and try to utilize that to try to solidify the town's position. You know, it's just, it's, it, it's always a challenge to say the least, so. But mm -hmm. there'll be some, and we're gonna minimize them, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I mean, we, we analyze them to what that tends to Nauseating. be within the office, and, and we'll delay it. I mean, we, we, Joe was just talking about the job. We, we delayed a contractor being paid for three months for this change order because we didn't believe, wholeheartedly didn't believe that he was due the money. The full value. Right? It, every avenue to verify it to, to a point where we... And we got a reduction from it, so we could have you weather them out. <laughs> so, so it, that's all it's I a shame you have to play those games, but that, that's, yeah. that's... They made up the game. That's we, the industry. We have to play the role Unfortunately, that's the industry. So, and you have to stay within the budget. Too. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah, we yeah, that's why I have a good cook. Someone there, yeah. you know, we watching out for the for our interest the is yeah. so important. We yeah. rely heavily, um, and I've said this to countless clerks, there are eyes and ears in the field because as a design team, we can't be there every day to watch everything that's going on. There are eyes and ears to make sure if something comes up that they have a question about, we're always a phone call away. doesn't matter whether it's me as the project manager, the project architect, the job captain, the, right down to our interns or our CA guys. Always, any one of us is a phone call away, and we will get an answer to make sure that it's correct. So that's the way it's out yet. We got to get the design away. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Well, my question now is because we seem to be moving along now as planned. Do we need to meet more often as a committee? Not yet. What's yeah. going on? Not yet. So I anticipate that that's going to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the chief in, in the in the uh, committee well informed that if I think we need to have a meeting, I'm going to get you together to have this meeting. Um, you know, I think you could wait till the end of the month, beginning of next month, to meet, just so that it gives them time to be able to provide some information in front of you. And at that point, um, as far as um, the only question I would have is if if I had a proposal and we needed to execute it, does it go through you and the treasurer or, or the would it go to the French committee? And so would you guys need to meet and vote on it to move forward? So 
in the event that I need proposals signed, we may have to have a meeting just to execute those proposals or, or invoices, and then we can move forward. But I'll give you a plenty of notice on that. Okay, we meet every two weeks, but if, if meetings were necessary in between, uh, yeah, I don't see it being. Uh, I don't uh, see any. Uh, the committee is, is pretty flexible, and we'll. Yeah. In the event I can't make a meeting, I'll provide you a written update and I can always give it to the chief to read, okay? The, the next, is always complex, the next so. scheduled meeting is the 23rd of January, and after that it would be the 13th of February. It's the second and um, second fourth, fourth Tuesday, Tuesday of, of every month. Of, for both the credential committee and for the uh, well, credentials is the first the the Thursdays, yeah. and uh, the long committee is on Tuesday. I will, I will let you know. I, 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 right now, I'm sure I'm not like um, So, I've, in my project plan, I think I, I called to get what those dates were. So, mm -hmm. my plan for reporting back relative to where we stand with budgets and things of that nature, relative to each of our milestone estimates, is based on the second and fourth. Okay. I forget if it was Tuesday or Thursday, mm -hmm. but I, I marked all of those in our overall project plan. Um, so continue with those scheduled meetings? Continue with those scheduled meetings. And we'll try and make sure if there's nothing, there's nothing. You can always cancel. Okay. And if, um, if something comes up that we need an emergency, we'll, we'll let you know well in advance. Any other questions? I don't think so. This is more questions. Okay, budget seems to be moving along um, pretty much as we had. Anticipated. Yeah. Anticipated. That's, uh, if there's a glitch, I'll let you know. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative paperwork. Did you get anything to do with these guys? Uh, uh, printed copies and I was going to Yeah. Um, congratulations on promotion. Thank you. Um, are you going to still be the at the meeting? We are working through that in the office. It will be either by myself or I believe Joe Milani, who you met initially, mm -hmm. will be the individual, but we're kind of hashing through a couple of projects that have come through in between okay. when we left last and when we just got the contract to figure out staffing wise within the company. So you'll provide a, a list eventually. Um, sure. So I would need conflict of interest from either you or Joe or both. Okay. You got you should have gotten an email. Oh, with the link yeah. to the mm -hmm. and um, oh, have you done you. those before? The training and the testing? I believe I have. But I think it was a while ago. Right. Um, and so, so there was an attachment with the form that he did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here's the forms for the two of you. And then if you could take the test now, you can buy it at the 31st of January. Yeah. You, you say you, you have, you, you you have this in... Uh, I have in a PDF form I will send over. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> there may be others that we're going to have to review by our mm -hmm. attorney as well. But that, 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 oh. that should be chairman. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be president. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I don't want to be president. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Although I'd be in Florida <laughs> playing golf. Yeah. 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 Just, if you could just change that in the PDF for chairman rather than president. I will um, pull with me at the PDF and we can send it to the community. I will do that now. <laughs> there may be others. I actually read it. I'll read the rest of it. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Melissa, can I ask you to make another one? I don't know how to do that. I can say with him that I guess. That's not true. Three more. Um, three more. Yeah, it's just as easy, right? All right, that's the administrative paperwork. Um, approve the minutes of the November 14, 2017 meeting. Everybody read them? May take a motion, please. Make a motion. Second. All in favor? All right. So moved. Okay. Our 
under 48 hour business. I have uh, one item and do we want to replace Andy the committee? We have to. We have to. Okay, we're going to have to. Is it an appointed position or is it a person that has to be selected by No, it's appointed. Appointed by the I imagine what it's going to happen. We have some applications on the We do. We discussed that on Thursday at our meeting. Yeah. To me, in fairness, we want to give them a show of interest early and that's an opportunity if they're still interested. If not, then we advertise it. Okay. See if there's any more interest. I mean, those people that came to a couple of meetings that we had that weren't, weren't aware that we were searching. Mm -hmm. Some people that came to a meeting that said, you know, we never heard about it, you know, we'd be interested if it, the opportunity came up. But I think in fairness, we ought to just check to see if the ones that have already applied in the past That's good. are interested. We contact them. But we'll discuss that first. Yes. Okay. And see what the full board decides to do. We'll kick the ball right in the yard court. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no other business. I'll accept a motion. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Have a great rest of this one.